Hey guys, it's Will from Tested. Uh, today we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, I'm actually going to fix this guy right here. It's Joey's phone. It's a Samsung Galaxy S4. It's something he uh, smashed within, I don't know, let's say a month and a half of getting it. Uh, and he did a pretty good drop on it. We've teamed up with the folks at iFixit to do a repair and we're gonna have some giveaways at the end of the video. So if you stay tuned all the way through, then you'll get to see, or you know, fast forward to the end if you don't wanna watch the repair, you'll get to see uh, how to win stuff like this. It is a repair mat. Uh, it's magnetic. I'm going to use one in the video. And basically you have these little squares you can put screws in. There's a magnet behind each one and it's a whiteboard so you can write on it to say, oh, this is this is the screw for this part. Uh, we also have some other stuff. Uh, this is a ProTec toolkit from iFixit. It has, it, well, it's this thing right here, uh, which is like 56 bits, security bits that'll let you open almost anything. And then it also has some spudgers, which you'll see how, how to use in a bit. Uh, pry opener things uh, and like tweezers and stuff like that. So uh, we're gonna give all this stuff away at the end. Uh, yeah, there are tweezers in here. Uh, we're gonna give all this stuff away at the end. So uh, I guess let's just get started and, and see how to do this. Uh, the first place I'm going to start is with Duzuki. So Duzuki is iFixit's proprietary wiki thing that has all of their instructions on it. And you can see here, uh, you know, they give you detailed photographs with descriptions for each step. I'm going to be following along in the iPad app. It's also on the web, so you can find it there. So according to our handy dandy instructions, the first thing I need to do is take this pry bar, jam it in this gap uh, just above the power button on the, on the phone. The phone's off, by the way, just, you know. Uh, before you get started. And then just kind of twist it. It's a real loose uh, kind of snappy uh, connector that holds this plastic shell on the back. And you can just kind of run around the edge. Oh, there's a lot of Joey skin in here. Gross. Pocket fuzz and nonsense. Okay, so now that just pops off. The back's off. There's a little antenna in here, it looks like. That's weird. I don't know what that's for. Uh, maybe NFC, actually, from the battery. Uh, next up, I'm gonna move to the next step. Hold on, it goes to, oh, step two. Step three is uh, remove the micro SD card. There is no micro SD card. I'm already moving ahead. Um, for step four, I lift the battery out here. Well, that was easy. I'm putting all the pieces over here to the right where they're out of the way. Um, I think I do the SIM card next. And usually there's a little bit of a lip on the SIM card maybe underneath. Does it snap? Oh, it snaps, okay. A little piece of plastic in here from something. Joey's phone dropping is uh, famous in the tested office. Okay, now there are nine Phillips screwdrivers. They're double zeros, which I had in my uh, toolbox. These are just normal screws, so you know, I don't need anything fancy to do this, but there's nine of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I didn't even have to use my, use my toes. Okay, so I'll take these off. I'm gonna not loosen them all the way first. Uh, this is a fairly complex removal because we have to take basically everything out of the phone to get to the screen because they're assembled from the screen up. Um, and it might be fairly involved. I'm not actually, you know, there's no way for us to do this in advance without destroying more than one phone, so. Um, oops, okay, so here we'll We'll put our first guys up here. I have a white pig, whiteboard here. These are uh, step six. So you can denote whatever you want on the board. I, I just put the step that they come from so that I know which ones are which. Um, you know, it's just a personal preference. There are a lot of little plastic tabs here, Joey. I don't know what they're from. And all if you see the blue stuff on the end of these screws, that's actually Loctite. Um, there's two kinds of Loctite. One is red and one is blue. The blue you can remove, but it won't kind of vibrate out over time. The red is basically like crazy glue for screw threads and is, base, is pretty much makes screws permanent. So um, if you... Like I've taken apart lots of consumer electronics stuff without using uh, Loctite when I put it back in. It hasn't been much of a problem for me. Uh, but if you're concerned about the screws vibrating out over time, you can uh, get blue Loctite at pretty much any hardware store 
for a couple of bucks for a tube that will last you more or less forever. Um, and it's good. I don't know if you need to clean off the old Loctite first. So like I said, I don't really use it for stuff that doesn't vibrate. So it's not been an issue for me. Okay. So there are nine screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's right. Ooh, they have green Loctite on some of these. Those might be some sort of anti to let people know that they've opened it up. Okay, so now I have to pop off the mid-frame. It's connected to the display assembly by several plastic clips behind the chrome bezel of the mid-frame. They'll guide you through separating the clips to free the mid-frame. Okay, so I'm gonna use this guy again, and I'm gonna start on the volume button side of the phone. Okay. Um, I'm inserting between the chrome bezel around the display glass and the larger chrome border piece. It seems like this one right here. This is the side that took the hit too, so. And the instructions say, hey, be careful doing this because there are points in the mid-frame bezel, ow, uh, that are a little bit thin, so. I'm gonna get a, another one of these guys. So the plastic, uh, the plastic removers are not uh, tools that last forever. They have a real short lifespan in my experience. So it looks like he started on the bottom here. Oh boy. Did I miss a step? Okay. Hmm. I'm not finding the hooks. So this is one of those situations where you just kind of go slow and take it easy and try not to apply too much force because you don't want to crack the pieces that aren't going to be removed. So just so you know, when you replace this phone, uh, everything from the front of this seam, I don't know if you can see this, but this seam right here, everything on the screen side of where my blue spudger is, where my blue separator is, is going to get re replaced. So if that stuff breaks, it's not that big a deal. If the stuff toward me breaks, if this edge right here breaks, then I've got problems. Joey's going to be sad. I'm making sure I didn't miss any screws. I didn't. So I wouldn't think it would be this difficult, but maybe there's a lot of dead skin in here too. This is kind of gross. Like all this stuff coming out, little bits of Joey. I might get one of the bigger ones and see how that does. One of the wide guys. These, uh, we've used these in the past, so they're a little gouged up. When you get them, they're, they're new and they don't look like this, obviously. Oop. Oh, there we go. Wow. I don't know what I did there, but it just popped loose. Oh, I must've hit it right on the right spot. Um, so I'll show you how this works when I get it open in a sec. Okay, I'm gonna keep going around this way because this way seems to be releasing better. Okay, and yeah, once I, got it, once I got it started, it went pretty well. Getting it started was a little tricky. This turn is hard. Well, the back popped off there. That's weird. Let's see if we can just replicate that. Nope. Okay. So you'll notice I'm just going really, really slowly and I'm not forcing it if it doesn't want to pop off because the way these, the way these kind of joints work, if you force them, you'll almost always break off the clips. And if you break off too many clips, it won't ever go back together, right? You can break off a couple, it's not a big deal. Um, but if you break off more than a handful, you'll likely have problems. And it seems like 
uh, twisting on the leading edge rather than the trailing edge of the of the separator is the way to go on this. So, like I'm sliding it around the corner and twisting out. Oops, good thing the screen's already broken. Uh, twisting out on this edge, on the edge that I'm moving toward is the thing that seems to be working best. Good God, this phone is really slippery. No wonder, no wonder it got dropped. It deserved it. Oh, there we go. Oh God. Oh, gross, dude. Okay. I hope this is just pocket lint. I think this is what everybody's phone looks like after you've carried it for a year or two, though. Okay. Okay, so let me show you how this goes together. I don't know if you can see this because it's really close. But if you look right here, see there's these little notches on the side of the side of the phone and they're really tall, it's tiny. On the edges, there's also, there's little uh, uh, tongues that go in there into those notches. And when you snap them together, then the phone goes in place. But see, so you can see right here, just really tiny little notches and there's a ton of them around the edge. So when you're, when you're jamming this thing into that gap and prying, basically what you're doing is taking the thinnest thing that you have that's gonna be able to do that, that amount of, of uh, force and you're just twisting it just a tiny, tiny bit just to pop these out one at a time. Uh, you can't get them out all at once and um, you just have to be real careful because if you break off the tabs, then it won't go back together right. Uh, so that's that. Uh, on to the next step, step, step eight now if you're following along at home. Oh, I already did that. Okay, yep, still prying, did all that. Yep, did that, yep, did that. Okay, on to step 12, progress. Now I have to start removing cables. Okay, so for this one, this guy is called a spudger. Uh, this is a black nylon, basically, tool. It's got uh, a flat end that's fairly thick and chunky, and then it's got a pointy end. You use it because it's non-conductive, and it won't cause a lot of damage to electronic components. Uh, it theoretically, it should be softer than whatever you're using. So first thing I'm gonna do is disconnect this cable right here that goes down here to the USB board on the bottom. And I do that by jamming this guy up under this edge. I say jamming, but I mean gently lifting. And I think it's always helpful to look when, they, when you do these to see the, from the pictures what the connector is. This looks like it's kind of a flat, uh, uh, flat contact connector and should be relatively easy to get out and, and back in. Um, but it's holding pretty well, yeah. So you can see, you can't fold this up too far because this, this, this cable isn't flexible, really. is isn't very flexible. But this thing just sockets down. When you want to reconnect it, you just mash it back in place. So that one's easy. Disconnect the front-facing camera connector. That is step two. Let's see what that is. That's up here. Okay. So that's this one. And it's the same basic move. Um, you'll note I'm holding the board down as I do this lifting. There we go, that one's off. And then the third one is the earpiece speaker assembly. It's right next to the, to the headset. Okay, so those three are done. I'm on to step 13. Disconnect the headphone jack assembly cable connector. That looks like this one right here. And it pops right off. Boy, this is a lot easier than I was expecting. Um, display digitizer connector. That's this one right here. All these, this is my favorite kind of cable that you find in phones. Um, if, you, if you've taken apart anything really small, you've seen a lot of like those ribbon cable connectors that just go into a slot and they're held there with friction. They're always a nightmare. Um, this is pretty, these guys are pretty easy. Uh, and then the lot, this is the antenna cable connector. So that's right here. I think I actually have two of these because it's a CDMA phone. I bet I'm gonna have to remove that before too long, but I could be wrong. We'll see if, we, uh, if it comes up. Okay, remove this screw right here. It's the only screw holding this thing together. So this is gonna go in the, ooh, it's a tiny little screw. That goes in step 13. 
Oh, 14. Good thing it's a whiteboard. Okay, gently remove the motherboard. Hmm. Okay, I think that this this cable over here, when I, another good tip. I read all the way to the, to the end, uh, and at the end it says certain models have another cable on this side that's connected. This guy has to be disconnected before I can lift this motherboard out. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do it. These are my among my least favorite kind of connectors, those little tiny uh, antenna connectors. They're really tough. Um, okay, so gently lift the motherboard out. Be careful not to stag it. I'm grounded against the device. Um, It says, be careful not to snag it on cables, which seems like generally good advice. Seems like it's hooked behind the camera sensor, maybe? I'm just kind of gently wiggling here and lifting just the tiniest bit. The camera's still in here. What do they do? So they're grabbing there, there, and there. Okay, it's out. Uh, I'm not gonna put that on the magnet, I'm gonna put it over here on top of the battery. That seems safe. Okay, that's pretty good. Now I have more screws. I remove a tiny screw here that holds the headphone jack in place. So one of the things iFixit does that I really like is they include a repairability score when they take apart new, new electronics. And this phone got a relatively high score, uh, and seven or an eight, I think, I can't remember. Uh, and I kind of understand why, because it's been pretty straightforward to take apart, even though there've been a lot of pieces so far. So um, remove the headphone jack. I'm using a pair of tweezers for this. I think they even include tweezers with the, with the Pro Toolkit. So I guess I'll use their tweezers for this. Um, okay, that's this guy, and it's gonna slide out. Oh, maybe not. How is this working? Oh. I can't tell what's what this is because of all the skin. Oh, there we go. I didn't need tweezers. Put that over there. We can see what this looks like. Oh, it physically slots in. It's a relatively small thing. It just slots into the space. Um, it, it lifted straight out basically. So you probably don't want to grab it by the wire, but everything else is fair game. Okay. If present, remove the 2.4 millimeter PH00 Phillips head 00 screw, securing the upper display assembly bracket. I have one of those. So I'm going to remove that. Okay. This looks exactly like the step 16 screw, but I don't think it is. Step 18. Remove the upper assembly, dis display assembly bracket from the display. Okay. Let's see what the picture says. That is just this guy right here. Hmm. Does this slide out? The upper display assembly bracket. Oh, okay. I get it. There's a thing holding it in place. Hmm. One of the other tools I've found handy are uh, dental picks. Uh, and while I think these came from a friend of mine who works at a dentist's office, iFixit also sells dental picks. Don't really see what's holding this in place. Was it lifted straight out? This is, hmm. Being really careful with the pointy metal thing around these flat ribbon wires. They're, they're kind of fragile.
There we go. Okay, so that was, there was a little, oh, well, the whole thing came out. Okay, that's fine. Has to come out next. So the thing that was holding this is uh, these two, I don't know if you guys can see this. Let me get it someplace where you can see. Okay, there we go. These two guys right here, this one and this one, were hooked in the top of the edge of the, of the frame, and that was holding it along with this guy right here that kind of slid in, it looked like, or I guess snapped over on a, on a lip right here. Okay, so we'll put these all together. Remove the front-facing camera from the display assembly. I think that's what I just did, isn't it? Oh, no, that's this piece. Okay, front-facing camera, you're out. Um, usually when I deal with cameras and screens and stuff like that, you try to keep the pieces facing down when you're not using them so that then they don't collect dust just falling from the sky on them or else you'll have a big dust spot on the front-facing part of your camera when you put this back together. Remove the earpiece speaker assembly. Did that already by accident. Um, okay, now I get to remove the vibrator. <laughs> Insert the tip of the spudger under the vibrator, free it from the adhesive holding it to the display assembly. Okay. So, gently lifting. Be careful not to immediately remove the vibrator as its cable is also attached. Okay, so that's moving. Oh, so it's this cable right here I'm trying to avoid damaging. Okay. I assume that if I mess this up, Joey's phone doesn't. Oh, there it goes. Looks like the cable came up. Use the tip of the spudger to pry the vibrator cable up from the display assembly. Okay, let's get the picture for that. This seems like the hinkiest part of this whole operation right here. Okay, that's up. Um, they suggest using a heat gun, which you could totally do. I didn't think it was necessary, but there we go. Vibrator's out. Okay, so now we pop off the USB board. I don't see any more screws down here. Gently insert the USB, okay, gently insert the point of a spudger between the USB port and the USB port bracket. Oh, I see, okay. So there's a metal flange here. Hmm. Pry one side of the bracket off of its post. Let's see what the second part looks like. Okay, so it's just jamming it in this hole. Here we go. I'm gonna cheat and use the metal one. Well, that went over there somewhere. Okay, so this little guy just blasted off, uh, but it was it was hanging right here, and it lived on top of these two posts. So there you go. I'll put that over here. Put that with the other stuff over here, I guess. Um, now I removed the USB port bracket from the USB port. Did that already? Yep. Uh, disconnect the soft button cable from the USB board cable. Okay. That's this one right here. Is that it? Okay. Done and done. Disconnect the antenna connector from the USB board. That's this one over here. And also this one. Okay. The USB board is secured to the display assembly with light adhesive. Gently insert the flat edge of the spudger under the board and free it from the adhesive, go slow and be careful not to bend the board. Okay, so that's, hmm, I don't know how I'm gonna get under there. This one looks a little bit different than the one on the picture. <laughs> Let's see if I can pull this guy up a little bit, no. Pull this guy up a little bit too, because he has to come off as well. No, 
Okay, I can work that from this side. Wow, light adhesive. They weren't kidding. Okay, don't bend the board. Um, I'm gonna have to go get some more nylon spudgers. So I got a fresh spudger and I'm gonna come in here on this side and see, oh, that didn't seem good. Um, this is the trickiest part so far. These boards are really thin, kind of scary, and pretty well stuck to the, to the bottom of this, this uh, screen. I'm just kind of gently working around the edges. There's a post here in the middle that it's hung up on. I don't want to go too far in any one direction. I think I broke the tip off of this spudger already too. The idea of the spudger, part of the idea of the spudger is that it's supposed to be fragile enough that it breaks before you break something that would be expensive. So like wearing out spudgers is not a bad thing. You kind of want to, you'd rather do that than mar up whatever it is you're working on or Whatever the problem happens to be, boy, that, that is scary bendy. So far, I think this is the only place I've done anything that could even come close to destroying this phone. So fingers crossed, Joey. Okay, and then once I got it going, it just popped right off. So that's no big deal. Okay, we're gonna leave that down so the glue stays up. Here's what that looks like though. It's just this thing right here. So this is, this is the USB port, and then this cable goes up the side to connect the USB port to the motherboard. Okay, go slow, be careful not to bend the board. Did that. Peel up and remove the antenna connector cable from its channel in the rear of the display assembly. Okay. Antenna connector, so the red one was on the right. The white one was on the left. Wait, that's not right. The white one was on the right and the red one was on the left because I had the phone upside down. Ha <laughs> ha. On reassembly, it will be helpful to reinstall the USB board first and then reconnect the antenna connector cable before routing it back into its channel. That seems like good advice, just generally speaking. I assume that these buttons here, this cable here goes to the buttons on the front, the capacitive buttons on the front of the screen or the home button probably. Um, Remove this antenna from the display assembly as well. Wait, where's the antenna? Do, 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 do. Hmm. Oh, oh, that was the opposite wire. That was the one, that was where reading the instructions Helped me out. Okay, and that's it. That's the end of it. So this is the display assembly. This is the old and busted one. Oops. See, all cracked and exploded. I have a brand new one right here and it's the exact same thing. So now all I have to do is put Humpty Dumpty back together again. So here's the new one, still in loving shrink wrap. Uh, this also came from iFixit. Uh, they sell them and uh, screens for tons of other phones. So if you break your stuff, you can fix it. Uh, rather than paying somebody $300. I think that this one, uh, I'm gonna go back to the beginning and see, but I think that this one's 150 or 225 bucks, somewhere in there. Going back, going back, going back. Yeah, so this is the Verizon model, it's $229. Pretty expensive, uh, cheaper than a new phone by a pretty substantial margin though. I'm going to go back to the end and now we're going to basically just follow the instructions in reverse and put this back together. Okay, so the first thing I do per the instructions, put the USB board back in the bottom. I'm going to line it up with those posts and then hope that the glue is still sticky enough. This seems like the only real hinky part of the whole procedure. Uh, 
I wish I'd paid a little bit better attention to how these wires, these cables were routed, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. This one goes here. Oh, okay, so you can see, you can just barely see if you look here, there's a cable channel that goes from here all the way down and then comes out right there, which conveniently, oops, um, this kind of cable connector is a little fiddly. You have to be careful because there's these um, th real thin edges that connect around the side uh, of the post. And if you bend them in, then it's really hard to fix them. And you end up having to just usually break one off and then have it not be on as well as it should be. Apologize for my hands being in the way there. I don't know how else to do this one. Let me get the tweezers. This is also where having a pair of um, uh, glasses, oops, missed. Having a pair of glasses that you can uh, magnify with helps a ton. Because then you can actually see what you're doing instead of just kind of feeling. There we go. Okay, that one's on. I'm going to route the cable down using the tip of a nylon spudger. Okay, that worked really well. Let's do the same thing on this side. That one's over here, I think. Yeah. I don't see exactly where this, oh, there it is. Okay, so this one goes, this one follows a route that goes up and under, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Wow, this is really weird. It's not really weird as much as difficult. Um, so this one goes back around here underneath the cable for the USB board to connect to the motherboard. Over a pad of some kind. There we go. Let's push this around here. Okay, so it goes, this cable is tricky. It goes down, I don't know if you guys can see this. Okay, so here's the red cable, right? That's what we're looking at here. And it goes down between these two posts but by the screw under this cable. And then there's another channel just like the other one that goes all the way up the side um, and that seems to be what how you hold it in place. There's little tabs that'll push it into place as you slide it down this channel. I might have done this one backwards, but the beautiful thing about um, this type of cable is it kind of doesn't matter. It'll bend to fit the new place just as well as it would have fit the old place. Oops, did I lose the connection down here though? Oh no, that's just not on yet. Okay, so now I gotta push the, this down so the glue sticks. Um, and I didn't have to reapply glue, so that was nice. Just the old glue worked fine. And I'm just making sure this cable's seated well. It's worth taking a moment because once you start, once you go further down this process, it's going to be harder and harder to work with these tiny little cables. A little worried that that got twisted along the way, but. It should be okay. Hmm. That glue's not holding great, but I think it'll probably be fine once it's sealed up. Okay, moving on. Remove the USB board. Okay, did that. Okay, did that. 
soft button cable gets reconnected. That's this guy right here. So it goes on top of this one. No, I think this is supposed to go out here. Maybe not. I can't tell. This cable's just giving me problems getting back in to where it goes. I might have done it backwards, but it's kind of too late to go back now. Shouldn't impact anything. It's a two-way cable. It should work fine both directions. Um, okay, so I'm gonna. There's a little bit of adhesive on this cable. I'm gonna push down on it so it sticks in place. And then I'm just gonna gently, gently, gently snap that cable back in here. So now the button's connected to the USB board, but not to the to the main board, which isn't in the system yet. Disconnect the antenna connectors. Okay, I got both the antenna connectors on. I reconnected the soft cable, back one more. It's time for Captain Springy Bracket here to go back on. Um, and it, you can see it just goes, you don't want the, it, this is only gonna fit on one way. I mean, it, it will fit on both ways, but one way is obviously wrong. So you don't want the, the tip hanging out beyond the bottom of the, of the phone. So I'm gonna flip it around this way and I'm just gonna push it down into place and it just snaps in. Um, I have to put the vibrator back in. That is, okay, so the trick on this is there's a post. Uh, there's a hole on this, on this connector here. Hold on, where, where are you? Sorry, I'm terrible at this. There we go, I think I'd be better. Um, okay, so there's a little tiny post here, a uh, little tiny hole, that lines up with the post. And I think you're probably gonna wanna do that part first and then mash the, um, the vibration vibrator thingy into place. So I've got that lined up with the pole. I'm using, again, just using the glue that's already in place inside the, inside the phone. The old glue should be fine. And just pushing it down enough to hold in place. Because the nice thing about this kind of phone is once you get it sealed up, it should just hold in place from the friction, uh, you know, from the pressure of the back of the case on. Um, remove the earpiece speaker assembly. Okay, so that's this guy. Right here. Oh, gross. I'm going to clean this off. Okay. Earpiece speaker assembly goes right here. And these just hold in place with friction. Remember, we're going to put the bracket on top of them that'll latch them in in a minute. This is the front facing camera, which is next, I think. So the hard part is going to be when I put the motherboard back in, making sure that all these cables fold up and out of the way so that I don't actually um, mess anything up that doesn't, we don't want to mess up. Don't, don't leave anything unhooked that needs to be hooked, more importantly. Um, there's a little screw. This is the step 18 screw. My big sheet of instructions saves me here. And that, hold on. Oh no, first the bracket, then the screw. Ha ha. This was the one that was a little bit tricky to get off. Doesn't give specific instructions on how to get it back on, which makes me think it should be fairly self-explanatory. Um, and yeah, I'm just lining it up and pushing and it's snapping into place, so that was easy. Um, I lined it up in the back. I lined it up here first by the, so this is the speaker. I lined up this, this one and this one, and then just pushed it down on the other side and snapped it into place. So I need to put that screw back. Always go back a quarter turn to make sure you don't strip the threads. Headphone jack assembly. That's this guy right here. Hold on. Let's, let's see if this needs cleaning out while I'm in here. Oh, gross. That works, I guess. Um, this has a little bit of sticky stuff on the bottom. Uh, glue, presumably. Uh, there's one more tiny screw. This is the step 16 screw, cleverly labeled again. That one goes right here, I think. Yep. 
I'm not over tightening any of these. I just do just a quarter turn past hand tight is kind of the goal. You don't want to force it and crack the plastic housing that it goes into. Okay, so now the motherboard goes back in. Wow, this, is, this has been pretty fast. Um, I'm gonna pull this, oh wait, but wait. Let's get these plastic films off of the motherboard before I do that, because that would be a dumb thing to leave on, prevent you from cooling your CPU. The motherboard on the bottom looks fine. If there was more stuff on the bottom, I might put some rubbing alcohol on it just to clean it off. But it looks fine, and there's thermal pads here on the things that get hot, so it should be, should be totally okay. Um, I'm gonna slot this back up here. Again, up and under. Using the nylon spudger just because it's non-conductive and there's less chance of um, uh, electroshock problems when you're using that. Okay. It's not quite flush as I would expect. What am I missing? Did I miss something over here? Oh, yep. Okay, so the headphone jack didn't pop up. I didn't get that under on top of the motherboard, and that was just enough to keep it from uh, sitting flush when I slid it back in here. Um, does that look good? I feel like there might be a little bit more flush. Before I screw this in, I'm going to go back and make sure that everything's visible that needs to be here. Oops. There's the camera. The camera had bulged up a little bit and had gotten pushed out of its slot just a little bit. But you didn't need to disconnect that, and it should be fine. Um, headphone jack, display digitizer cable, antenna cable, other antenna cable. USB board connector is over here. Front-facing camera, earpiece speaker. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So I'm going to put the screw back in. This is the step 14 screw. Hmm. I'm a little worried that this might there might be a little bit a little bit much slack in here, but I think it's probably okay. Let's go ahead and start putting stuff back on. And if, if we need to take it apart, this part's not hard. So, headphone, display digitizer, antenna cable. I haven't done either of those yet. And to connect these these to get these guys connected back. It's really easy. You just kind of line them up very carefully, and then they require just the tiniest amount of force. Um, they kind of don't go in unless they're lined up right, which is a good thing. Oh, there it was. Um, it was just a little tiny bit harder than they normally are. I didn't want to press too hard. So when I gave it a good push, it snapped right into place. I'm going to put the motherboard screw back on, reconnect the stuff that I disconnected before, um, connect the, the antenna cable, which is this guy right here. And then also get the other one on the other side. That was quite literally the longest it's ever taken me to get one of those guys on. Okay, antenna connectors on. Um, these guys, these are tricky, these, these antenna connectors, um, just because you have to apply a really, like I said before, you have to get them exactly right or else you can damage the connectors. And um, because they're antennas, they're a little bit fragile, so. So on this one, I'm just using the tweezers to line it up, hopefully. When you're taking something like something like a phone that's that's really small inside apart, tablets are a little bit more forgiving um, because there's just more space inside generally. But with a phone, you want to make sure you get the cables back exactly where they were, otherwise it might not seal up right again. Um, ah, I hate these things.
I'm a little offended that Samsung chose to only use a single screw to hold the motherboard in. Although I guess once you get, there we go, nope. There we go, snaps in. Okay, headphone jack, display digitizer, antenna cable, snap, 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 um, USB board connector, connected, front facing cable, camera connector, yep, earpiece, yep, all of those are fine. Okay, now it's putting the mid frame back on. So that's this guy, we're back to this. Um, I'm going to make sure the camera is good. Is there, let's see, on the back, the camera just pokes right through. So if I have fingerprints on this, it's okay. So one of the things you need to look at when you're doing this is if you get fingerprints or something on the camera sensor, you, well, not the sensor, but on the camera lens, it doesn't matter on this phone because the lens just pokes all the way through the case. This is a hole. Um, but if you have glass on the back of the case over on a different phone, say, you'd want to make sure you clean that off really good before you uh, put this back on. And I'm just gonna go, I think around the edges here and just kind of real gently pinch and squeeze. All that skin's cleaned out. You're welcome, Joey. Okay. So like the USB port lines up still, that's good. Headphone jack lines up, even though it's kind of gouged where the where the phone took the hit. I think it looks looks pretty good so far. Um, I think all I have left is putting the SIM card back in. I'm gonna put the battery. Whoa! Oh wait, forgot something. My mat saved me. I haven't put the nine screws back in. I'm gonna put them in right now. Um, that would have been bad. I'm not gonna Loctite these. I don't think it's strictly necessary for phones just because they don't really vibrate very much. So it's un, it, you don't have situations where the screws fall out very often. Um, I did put Loctite on my laptop when I put it back together after replacing or upgrading memory or something. Um, just because it, I found that those screws did get loose and I'd lost a couple over the years. So your, your mileage may vary. This has a case on the back. So even if they do get loose, the phone will get a little bit floppy but the screws won't be lost, so it's not that big a deal. Um, and since they use fairly standard bits, you can fix it with any eyeglass repair kit, basically. Um, so there's nine screws total here. I'm just kind of going, uh, almost like you change a spare tire, um, just so that no one piece is tightened down before the, you know, head of all the others. And I'm not getting super tight. I'll get a little tighter on everything before I close it up for good. Okay. Oh, these guys down here. It looks like this is going to back together really well, which is always nice. Sometimes, sometimes you have little bulgy bits in the plastic, and that means you have to take it apart and go back and figure out what you, uh, what you put back in the wrong place. Okay, nine screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think I can put the battery in, fire this bad boy up, see if it works. Okay. I didn't even break off any of the tabs really when I was opening it. That's really good. Okay. So to get the back, I, you know what? I'm going to leave the back off while I fire it up. Here we go. Oop, did the battery just fall out? No. Fingers crossed. It vibrated. That's a good sign. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Looks like, looks like we have a working phone. Make sure. Colors, video. That is not too bad. Um, so that's how to repair your Samsung Galaxy S4. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the back on while you're watching. It just snaps, so line it up. 
and kind of gently press around the edges and it'll click into place. You can snap around the edges and just make sure you get it evenly all the way around so there's no bulges. Um, the repair, the screen uh, from iFixit was about $229, uh, which is fairly expensive, but if you look at replacing a, what it would be a $600 off contract phone, is not expensive at all. Um, the tools that I used are available from iFixit. The Pro Toolkit, which is this guy, it has a bundle with a million security bits, some plastic spreaders, a spudger, uh, tweezers, and some other stuff like an anti-static strap and some metal spudgers and other stuff is uh, $55, $60, $65, sorry. Uh, and then they also sell a bundle that includes this project mat, which I really like a lot. It's got a bunch of little magnets under the squares and you can put your screws down so you don't lose them or do what I did and forget to put screws back in when you're putting something back together. Uh, if you wanna know how to win any of the stuff that we've shown here, some of the stuff that we've shown here, we have a ProTech toolkit we're giving out. We have an extra mat that we're giving out. Uh, we might have some other goodies as well. You can go down here at the bottom of the screen, like right here, there'll be a URL. If you go there and put in some information, you will be entered to win. Uh, and we're gonna be doing more of these in the future. So if you have stuff you would like to see us see fix, uh, post in the comments below. Thanks for watching and subscribe if you like the channel. We'll see you guys soon, I'm Will.